So I've been using the Pixel 7 for exactly seven days at this point, and I have a few thoughts after my little experience with this device, what it offers, whether I'll be switching out to the Pro model, and if I think you should go out and go buy one. So let's get into it. So if you watched any of my other content, you'll know that I've used a fair amount of Google smartphones over the years. And just of last week, I switched from the regular Pixel 6, which was my phone for the previous year, to this newly released Pixel 7. And I also spent a little bit of time on the 7 Pro, but that's coming in a future video, so wait for that one. Now, I didn't expect any major changes here, and well, I would say there's nothing earth shattering, but let's talk about usability, because I think this is one of the key areas where things have been changed. Because Google has made a few changes that aid the usability, I think the Pixel 7 is actually a little bit better to hold and use as it's a tad smaller than the Pixel 6, and overall, I think that's a good thing. You actually only use 0.1 inches of screen real estate, but it's marginally thinner, the phone that is, it's lighter, and that makes it easier to hold. Another bonus is that the buttons on the right side have moved down ever so slightly, and that's great for reaching up. I will say I'm still in love with the Pixel 6a size, but I think that it's perfect that the 7 is a comfortable step out without becoming too massive, if you will. Google has also toned down the colors this year, and the back glass camera bar is also now aluminium with cutouts. It's still quite striking in its own right, but I would say, at least as far as I'm concerned, it's not quite as unique as the black camera bar felt a little bit more eye-catching. The seamless shift as well from the camera to the side rails is an excellent decision, I will admit that, even though if even though we have lost those lovely matte grippy black side rails. I was actually sent the lemongrass model by Google and having played with the black version as well, I'm so glad that I have this model. I think it hides fingerprints so much better. And when you're using it, you can almost see the color change from light yellow to white, depending on the lighting conditions. The champagne gold metal frame isn't exactly my style, but I still do think it is the best color, at least at this range by some margin this year. I have also been using some cases from Caseology and I don't think anything really out there at this point in time really does justice to the design itself. I might pick up the official cases at some point in the future just for that reason. Something I have noticed at least with this, at least in this early stage though, is that when using a screen protector, the new in-screen fingerprint scanner is far faster and more reliable than last year too. That's probably nice to hear for many of you that did have problems with the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. Not that I can actually say that I had that because I didn't have any major issues to be completely honest with you. I just thought it was a bit slow, although reliable for me. This time around though, we also have software-based face unlock to help you get your phone unlocked quickly if you don't want to use a fingerprint scanner. It is super quick and really, really easy to set up. You can't use it for payments though because it's not quite as secure, but it is ridiculously fast, especially as I mentioned, you don't want to use a fingerprint scanner. Sometimes though, in dark environments or in a dark room, it does take a couple of goes, but I just switch to the fingerprint scanner there usually anyway. So a major reason that I think I prefer the regular Pixel 6 and the 7 is that completely flat display. I know for a lot of people, this is a contentious area of just about any flagship smartphone. I just think curved sides and they're nice to look at, but they're just not, they lack that usability of a flat screen. And overall, I have to say using this, I haven't seen any mistouches or ghost touches. It's just a joy to use. And I think, as I said, it's going to be a big deal for people who do worry about those kind of things. I'm also really happy with the 90 hertz screen. It's brighter than last year, just marginally, but it has great viewing angles and it's pin sharp even at full HD plus resolution. I do though want to see 120 hertz at some point in the future, as although 90 hertz is great, I think that will be the icing atop the cake and it would just make things feel a little bit more of an upgrade. So how does the entire system run though? Well. The core components are still solid and the new Tensor G2 chip is a great follow on, but this ain't going to compete with the raw performance levels of the likes of the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 or whatever the latest processor happens to be in early 2023 and beyond. Android 13 running on this is also nothing like Android 12 either in that it does look the same, but bugs are few and far between at least this time. Google seems to have squashed as many as possible before this 2022 release, rather than just throw something out that at least last year felt a little bit unfinished or although it was a big overhaul nonetheless. If you've come for this video though looking for benchmarks, then I'm sorry to say I'm not that benchmark guy and I simply don't really care about having the outright most powerful processor, even though it is a nice thing to have. Tensor G2 is good, it's definitely not the best. It'll handle most things like gaming, streaming and all that kind of thing. That's all really I have to add as I'm not exactly a power user. 
I'm also not actually sure just how good the gaming performance is because I've only actually tried the Call of Duty mobile demo. That does just run fine and I will wager as well you'll be okay with a lot of games, 3D games like the Pixel 6 was fine at running games last year. If I'm going to game on my smartphone, it'd probably likely be on Stadia before that shuts down and GeForce Now, which don't actually tax the system and only rely on the connectivity. Apologies, I'm not much of a mobile gamer, so it wouldn't really be fair for me to delve into the intricacies because it's something I don't do often. I'd wager, like I say, you'll be able to play most of the biggest titles with no real issues and solid frame rates throughout. That's a really long way of me saying I'm content with the second gen Tensor processor and the performance doesn't actually seem that far behind the likes of the OnePlus 10T with its much greater internal or higher specifications. Like last year, there are a ton of high-end devices that will absolutely smoke the Pixel 7 in benchmarking, but I'm struggling to see the difference in general things. As with what well, always seems to be the case with Pixel, you get benefits that you don't necessarily see. Most of the processing grunt is saved for exclusive features, but these are gonna be pretty familiar. And that leads me nicely to the cameras. I've kind of given up on expecting a telephoto lens on this non-pro pixel series, at least from now on, but it's more of the same this year with that dual camera system. Google is back with that 50 megapixel camera, still excellent. And there are a few little extra tweaks that I'm not sure I've really noticed, it must be said. There's still a no, there's still no pro mode for, for all the 50 megapixel photos, but I do hope that that does get added at least at some point down the line. I think this is still the best point and shoot smartphone camera you can go out and get, so long as you don't want to do too much more, especially with regard to video. Although I will say the new cinematic mode is a cool addition. It just doesn't work that well in my brief testing. HDR video as well, I think that's nice, but I'd actually question whether it's worth those extra massive file sizes that it does produce. The short of it is that the Pixel 7 has a fantastic camera system that just lacks that one lens to, that, that I'd consider it perfect or and a really perfect everyday companion. Also on top of that, if you're a selfie shooter, the upgraded 11 megapixel front facer is even better here too than the 8 megapixel selfie camera found on the Pixel 6. So it is minor, but it is notably boosted. You can't really ask much more for that. So what else do we need to discuss? Ah, the battery life. Well, I was really interested to see just how the Pixel 7 survived with an almost 10% smaller battery here. And while I wouldn't call it a battery beast, it's an all day phone with a little tiny bit of overhead to spare. Two days? Well, not quite, but I'm, I am charging the day after if that makes sense. What that means is I'll charge in the middle of the day, say 11 a.m., and then the same sort of time the day after. And for me, that's pretty much fine. My screen on time metrics are pretty low by the average user standards, but the standby time is really good and my usage overall has been fairly solid if I do head into that heavy realm. I am though going to put the Pixel 7 through its paces properly over the coming weeks as I spend more time with it as my companion smartphone. Disappointingly though, the charge speeds haven't improved. You're still capped at 21 watts via the uh, wire or via the Pixel stand. Maybe they will get a boost in the Pixel 8 series, but overall it'll take you, I reckon around an hour and a little bit to go from zero to 100%. So it's not the worst, but it's still not the best by any stretch of the imagination. So summarizing my entire week with the Pixel 7, I think the camera and the software have always been the two main reasons that I've enjoyed using a Pixel day to day, or at least for the vast majority of time. And that certainly hasn't changed this time either. I think that the marginally smaller size and some of the little tweaks to fix issues like the fingerprint scanner and even the signal, which is a heck of a lot better here, make for an even greater quality device this time around. Now, I'm hoping very much that problems aren't an issue moving forward, but even now, as I mentioned, the signal is better, the fingerprint scanner is faster, plus you have that face unlock if you don't like it. The camera is improved ever so slightly, the battery is still solid, even despite a decrease, and most importantly, the price hasn't increased. So that's been my experience with the bog standard Lemongrass 128 gig Pixel 7 after around a week of usage. I'm really impressed, very happy, and I will revisit this at a later date when I've spent a lot more time with this device and share some thoughts. Um, but I did have some thoughts that I thought I'd share after a week. Let me know what you think of the new pixels down in the comment sections below. Have you pre-ordered? Are you looking to pre-order? But that's me done, and I will speak to you later.